Leaf fans, Steve Dangle here. Let's overreact to the preseason or something. You know, I'm sitting here and I, I haven't made a video on this channel in a while. There was the prospect pyramid. I haven't made as much over the last month as I'd like to because I'm working on stuff that takes a long time and I'm not allowed to tell you about it. It's starting to make me mad, but it's coming. Don't worry. It's coming. But now here we sit on the eve of Canadian Thanksgiving. Happy Canadian Thanksgiving. And the Leafs have already played seven preseason games. SEVEN! That's too many, man. What's wrong with four? What's wrong with four? Feels like the preseason has already been forever, but the irony is, if the preseason was limited to just four games, we wouldn't have some of the stories that we already do. Remember when Easton Cowan was the highlight of all preseason games? It didn't matter whether the Leafs won or lost. It's just that the kid who they just picked in the first round was doing great. Now he's not even the most talked about rookie on the Leafs. Fraser Minton is, he just snuck right into that conversation and he might sneak right onto the roster. He's been on this line with Kelly Yarncroke and Matthew Nyes and you would assume if a rookie was to make the lineup you wouldn't put him with another rookie, that's never worked for the Leafs before. Oh wait, yes it has, why don't we try it? They did and it's looked great. Matthews and Marner, Bertuzzi finally got on the board. A lot of the big guys on the team you could tell were like just sort of screwing around, at least for the first couple preseason games there wasn't a whole lot there Matthews and Marner when they were together three on three and the Leafs lost in overtime what was that then the game against Detroit you're like there they are there's NHLers playing like NHLers remember when Nylander being at center was one of the biggest topics of conversation he's not there anymore no and in part it's because Fraser Minton's been so good at center and also Nylander's better on the wing and they have him playing with John Tavares, who he's played with a ton, and Max Domi, who he's played with a ton throughout the preseason at very least. Can Nylander play center if you need him to? Yep. Can Domi play center if you need him to? Yep, there's three centers on that line. What else has been a topic of conversation? John Klingberg going down with an injury. Looks like he'll be back. Connor Timmons looked incredible. Then he goes down with an injury and it doesn't look like he'll be back for a while. And lots of conversation about, will Nick Robertson make the team? Maybe Pontus Holmberg in a fourth line role. Are the Leafs gonna sign Noah Gregor? Does Simone Benoit get a chance? It doesn't look like he's going to. Are they gonna have to wave Martin Jones? Where does Sam Lafferty play? I think I have an answer for all of that. Because one of the most common chirps that other fans have sent Leaf fans way all summer long is that the Leafs are well over the cap. And they are. In fact, if you go to the cap friendly page, the Leafs are the most over the cap team in the entire league. Now that ignores some pretty key things. Number one, Jake Muzzin, who is still under contract, is not going to play. We know he's not going to play. He's on LTIR. Matt Murray, he's not going to play. He's getting major surgery. We know he's not going to play. He's going on LTIR. So I made a roster using the cap friendly armchair GM tool. Uh, I, I made it. It's cap compliant, it looks pretty good, but there's some pretty key caveats there. Let's have a look. So here we have right here, a roster that looks pretty similar to a lot of the ones the Leafs have used over the last couple games in the preseason. Uh, the first line, Bertuzzi, Matthews, Marner. I could have told you that the day Bertuzzi signed. Most people could have. After that, you got Max Domi playing with John Tavares and William Nylander. Will that stay a line forever? I don't know but why not try it? It looks pretty good. The third line is the super fun line, the rookie line, the chaos third line of Matthew Nyes, rookie, big, likes to crash, Fraser Mitten, big, rookie, likes to crash, and Callie Yarncroke, who has a, a more of an offensive flair than we thought, at least in the back half of the season, and very defensively responsible. Fourth line, I'm gonna save because that's key to the salary cap conversation. There's Ryan Reeves, who we know is gonna be on it, and also David Camp, who we know is gonna be on it. It's actually a bit of an expensive fourth line, even without a left winger on it. Defense, I don't think is gonna be rocket science heading into the season. You're gonna have Riley Brody as your top pair, Assuming John Klingberg is healthy, you're going to have McCabe, Jake McCabe that is, he's still a Leaf, he's going to be playing with John Klingberg, and the third pair is going to be a 40 year old Mark Giordano playing with Timothy Liljegren. That's basically a decor that you had last year, adding John Klingberg and taking out a 
uh, J- Justin Hall. You could say Luke Shen, but like he was a Leaf for a hot minute, the hottest of minutes, but a hot minute. And in net, of course, the Leafs have Ilya Samsonov, who did get a little injured today at practice. Uh, it didn't seem like it was serious, so I'm gonna go forward assuming it's not serious. And obviously there's Joseph Wall as his backup. This is my draft roster. This isn't my final roster. I'll tell you about that a little bit later on, but you might notice there's some pretty key omissions here. One thing you'll notice, there is a spare on this roster. It's William Lagason, who I think is gonna get into games. He can play power play, penalty kill. He can play both sides. Giordano's 40, man. He's 40. Like, he shouldn't be playing 82 games. That just doesn't make sense. Then, of course, there's Connor Timmins, who I think is going to go on LTIR. 1.1 million. He was playing so well that he could have got traded. He could have got waived, but I think he would have got claimed. Like, seriously, he was playing so well. Big injury. He's going to go on LTIR to start the season. And that's a key part of this also, unfortunately. Two guys have to get waived in order to make this roster work. Number one, and least surprisingly, Martin Jones. Martin Jones was a pretty late free agent signing for the Leafs. And that means I don't think there was a ton of interest throughout the league. He played well in the preseason, though he hasn't really played well over the last five or six seasons, despite winning 27 NHL games last year. He makes $875,000 against the cap. Maybe teams will say that's too expensive. They want a league minimum player. It's not that far above league minimum. If the Leafs waive him, there's a really, really good chance he gets claimed. The Tampa Bay Lightning, I, I think everyone thinks that is the most likely culprit. Them or the Avalanche, both of these teams would probably be better getting Martin Jones than having whoever they have as next man up. Colorado has Georgiev, which is excellent, but Francois isn't ready to start the season. Eustis Anonen is a pretty young guy. Why not get Martin Jones, even if you have to wave him a little later when Francois is healthy? And as for the Lightning, you have Jonas Johansson, and Jones might be better than Jonas Johansson already. The other guy who gets waved here is Sam Lafferty, and this could actually work out for both parties. He, he makes over a million dollars. He's gonna get waived, and there's a really good chance he doesn't get claimed. He is going to have to play with the Marlies. He'll get a bit of a raise because you don't have to play escrow in the American Hockey League. And he's not, like, bad. It's not that. It's just that most teams can't add a player of his caliber for that amount of money at this point in camp. There's a really good chance if there's an injury or if the lineup's stale, he just gets called right back up. The last thing you might notice on this roster is I have Pontus Holmberg as the fourth line left wing. The Leafs could do this and they might still do this, but you might have noticed I'm leaving out Noah Gregor. Noah Gregor who has played pretty well this preseason. I think the Leafs are thinking along the same lines that they did with Zach Aston Reese last year. And remember, what they did with him, they had him on a PTO. It was long rumored that they had a contract in place with him, but it was a weird number. Why was it a weird number? Because for some reason, I don't know why they made it this way, but the closer you are to the salary cap, the more benefit you get from having players on LTIR. This is where you're going to want to spend a lot of time on capfriendly.com and I assume their most frequently asked questions page. But funny enough, this is one of those things that I think actually helps Fraser Minton make the team. Because Pontus Holmberg, he can be sent down without having to go through waivers, so he'll probably get sent down. Nick Robertson, unfortunately, it's better for him to get sent down than being a 12th forward or a 13th forward. He doesn't need waivers. He'll get sent down. Fraser Minton on his entry level contract makes $845,833 against the cap per year. Holmberg is only at 800. So Minton actually gets the Leafs closer to the cap than Holmberg would. Plus Holmberg and Robertson can go to the American League whereas Minton either has to go to the WHL or the NHL, which I don't know. I don't know how long we're gonna have that rule around. So this is gonna take a little bit of cap finagling and paper transactions. This isn't exact, but with Holmberg as the fourth line left wing, the Leafs have 
just under $132,000 in cap space. What they likely do in that case, if they have Fraser Mitten make the team, if Lafferty goes on waivers, if Martin Jones goes on waivers, if they only have one spare and it's William Lagason, they sign Noah Gregor to a contract as expensive as $931,000 against the cap, which would leave the Leafs with literally less than $1,000 in cap space, but it would help maximize the amount of relief they get from their LTIR pool. So I think either scenario could happen, but it's looking like Minton is actually going to make this team. The Leafs are going to have to waive at least two guys. They're going to have to send down Robertson, I think, and maybe Holmberg. That's a really interesting debate who you would rather have. And that is how the Leafs will start their season outside of a few weird paper transactions that I think we're all going to panic over. Could the Leafs have Holmberg, where Mitten is, sign Gregor to something like 950 and send Mitten back to the WHL? Yeah, they could absolutely do that too. And 950 is what he made last year with the San Jose Sharks anyway. This is how I think the Leafs are going to start the season. Injuries happen, man. Players go cold, players go hot, you never actually know. Bobby McMahon is a really interesting feature in all this as well. I don't know where he fits into the equation, maybe he gets waived. So, what do you think? Are you comfortable with this roster? Do you think this is a good roster? What does this roster still need, either immediately or down the road? Do you think Martin Jones is going to get claimed? Do you think Sam Lafferty is going to get claimed? And do you think I'm way off and something else completely different is going to happen? Obviously, I didn't even mention Easton Cowan. He'll be going back to London, but yeah, yeah. He, he was almost a second round pick. Like, that was pretty obvious. Nothing wrong with letting him go back to the London Knights and potentially go for a Memorial Cup. Let me know. But in the meantime, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like to tell your friends. Brand new Steve Dangle podcast up on SDPN. The SDPN YouTube channel is on the road to 100,000 subscribers. We've been gaining them real fast lately. We'd love it if you were one of them, you silly, beautiful goose.